Ready for this? That was terrifying. All right, good deal. That was pretty scary. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna do this again. I'm gonna plug in the power pack. I'm gonna angle towards the safety glass in front of you. And when I give you the signal, you're gonna hit that fire button. And we're gonna see if we can put a Nerf ball through a sheet of safety glass. You ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. That ain't gonna do it. It ain't gonna do it. All right, Guto, that didn't go according to plan. Um, I figured it'd be powerful enough to break it, so I'm gonna have to figure out a way to juice this thing up and make it more powerful. More powerful, more powerful. Juice this thing up and make it more powerful. That's still not all the way powered up. That is still not all the way powered For this video, I'm going to show you some cool tricks in Fusion 360. But if you want step-by-step -step instructions on how to build every aspect of the Nerf turret, check out this video here, which is also in the description. If it seems intimidating to build this entire thing on your first time and you've never touched Fusion 360, I have another video here and in the description below where you will build a basic fidget spinner. And it works just like this. Okay, back to the build. When you model parts that fit around real life objects like servos, I always recommend you model the real life objects first and build all your parts around it. This ensures that you have your scale right and that things fit together as they should. Once I finished the servo, I 3D modeled legs that will become the base of our Nerf turret. I then created a bracket that will sit on top of the servo, and I'm gonna use a screw and a nut to join these pieces together. When they're all put together, it'll look like this. Then I 3D modeled these platforms that I'm gonna to attach to the first servo and bring in a second servo to make a two axis gimbal that looks like this. Take a look at how this moves. See what's cool is with only two servos, I can sub 10 an entire half sphere in three dimensional space. But you'll get a better idea what I'm talking about when I bring in the rest of the parts, like this. Now you can see the full range of motion I can achieve with just two servos. To fire the balls, I'm using a simple flywheel design, which is basically how any Nerf gun or pitching machine or football launcher works. Now it's one thing to show you all how this is built, but now I have to teach the full 3D modeling process to nine-year-old Guto and seven other students about the same age, in my home, and online. I need to figure out how to make my turret more powerful to break the sugar glass. To address this, I'm gonna review rotational physics using one of the most powerful tools in science and engineering, unit cancellation. For starters, let's review how rotational velocity translates to linear. Here I have a wheel and a ruler. If the wheel and ruler are in contact with one another and I rotate the wheel, you could see that the distance the ruler is dragged is exactly the circumference of the wheel. My original wheel here has a radius of 7 eighths of an inch or 0.875 inches. If I multiply that by two pi, I get that the circumference is about 5.5 inches. So therefore, one revolution of this wheel translates linearly to a distance of 5.5 inches. These motors in my turret have a maximum velocity of 70,000 rotations per minute. To make things simpler, I'm gonna convert that to rotations per hour. To do this, I simply multiply 70,000 rotations per minute by 60 minutes over one hour and get that there are 4,200,000 rotations in one hour. That's a lot of rotations. To convert this rotational speed to linear speed, we simply multiply 4.2 million rotations per hour by 5.5 inches per rotation 
to get a linear speed of 23.1 million inches per hour. Now, no one measures their speed in inches per hour, so let's convert that to something more practical. There are 12 inches in one foot and 5,280 feet in one mile. If we divide that through, we get that the linear speed of these wheels is approximately 331 miles per hour. Now, let's be clear. 70,000 RPM is when the motor is at full power and there's no load on the shaft. When I put on the wheels, I introduce a couple problems, such as rotational inertia, unbalanced forces or wobble, and air friction. Because of the ridges, the air friction is considerable in this instance. Oh, hence my calculation of 200 miles per hour at the start of the video. Now, finally, the major problem, slip. Look at this wheel and look at this ball. Because these wheels are spinning so fast, they're probably only in contact with the ball for a few hundredths of a second. So most of that speed is not being transferred to the ball. It's just slipping by it. So what's the solution? Well, I can just make the wheels bigger. Now, obviously, a bigger wheel will correspond to a bigger linear velocity with some loss in energy due to a larger rotational inertia. But a bigger wheel will simply be in contact with the ball for longer. And if you make the wheel large enough, a good portion of the internet will think the wheel was flat the entire time. So this new design will use bigger wheels, thicker wheels, and use a different 3D printing filament to increase the coefficient of friction. I'm also going to change the contour of the edge of the wheel to better fit the ball when it's in its squished state. And then I'm going to build an entirely new turret around these wheels. Three days later. All right, Guto. I 3D printed all the parts you gave me to the specifications you wanted, and I gave you all the motors, screws, and tools you need to make your own Nerf turret. You ready? Yeah. While you build your Nerf turret, I'm going to build my own. It'll be bigger, stronger, faster, and feature the upgraded flywheels I've been working on. And I call it the Super Turret Plus Ultra. And you know what that means, right? Mondo Cool Montage Time? That's right, Mondo Cool Montage Time. That's right, boys. Mondo Cool. That's gonna... That is not nice, that is <laughs> All right, get it again. You want one? Let's do it. <laughs> that was it. That was the one. By the way, Guto, in all seriousness, what was your favorite part about building this that you remember? I know it's been a bit. Um, okay, well, I definitely like color customate customizing it because All right. then we get more green as it says there. All right, that's fair. And uh, and also I also like doing the joint thing and also making it is this just so that way it could like animate. That was cool. I like that too. Oh cool, but can we just fire this thing in the glass already? <laughs> All right. We can. Yay. Um and if it looks safe enough, you can fire it at me too. Yay. But let's Get the full class in here for this one because I want them to see it too. We're getting ready to shoot the Super Turret Plus Ultra. I got my whole class here. Guto, you're going to hit the button on my mark. 
Um, I don't know if this is going to work. It's still a Nerf ball, which is not the hardest object in the world. Um, my concern is I'm just spinning these up again a little bit, right? That's still not all the way powered up. That is still not all the way powered up. So they spin so fast, I tried to balance these wheels as perfectly as I could because the more I'm balanced, the more it vibrates, right? I've had the wires just literally snap right off of the motor. I've had a wheel fall off and then skip and just fly into the wall. Whee. These are all possible. Wait, That's why I have safety goggles. To me or me. You'll be safe because it's going to fall off. It's not, it can't really fall off. It's going to fall off and just glue itself to this. That's what happened because it's just going to spin up so fast. This plastic bit's going to weld to that plastic bit and that'll be the end of it. All right, ready? All right. You want a second shot? Yes! Yeah. Yeah, all, right, all, right. all right, so I just fired with the 2S pack and it worked, but might as well fire with the 3S pack. You guys ready? All right, I'm gonna plug it in, we'll count down. I'm Woo! Scared. Okay. It's gonna blow up. Go, all right. Go on. God. I smell smoke. Oh, I, I smell smoke. smoke too. Okay, we stopped the video when we smelled smoke. Everything's fine. The motors just drew so much power that things started melting. But we're going to fire at a new target, and that target is <laughs> <laughs> me. You guys all get to fire at me. Yeah. Yeah. This video is my first big release. I have two other videos that are already in the works. One is where I built an infinity mirror icosahedron helmet, which is right there. And right now that's at 2% brightness, at 100% brightness. It's literally as bright as an entire house, which I wear on my face. <laughs> the second video we're working on is where this same class here builds a six axis robot arm, which is cooler than any robot arm you've ever seen. It's stronger, it's faster, it is controlled with a wireless PlayStation controller. Um, I think you guys really enjoy it, so subscribe if you want to see that. If you want to build one of these turrets for yourself, I'll make all the videos available on my second channel, which includes the wiring, the coding, the 3D modeling, step-by-step -step instructions to build the entire thing. And if you want to take classes with us, leave a comment and we'll be in touch. And if you're interested in getting a Nerf turret kit, I can make that available too. So uh, without further delay, it's time to fire at me. You Yay! get to fire first. Why does it sound different? So I think we're basically draining these batteries extremely quickly. So hand it to me, Gabe. Yes. All right. Yes. 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 Next, next kids get to fire with the 3S pack. Yes. Lila gets the 3S pack. I don't want to die. Please. Well, me neither. Well, that was a lot of fun. Did you have fun too, Guto? Uh, yeah. <laughs>
You and your class genuinely did make this. In fact, that was two years ago now. Yeah, I was only nine. That's crazy. Um, and since then, we've coded video games such as Pong <laughs> and Cookie Clicker. <laughs> And I want to show you the final version that you're going to 3D model in the tutorial. This version right here. The tutorials will not only teach you the modeling, as I said prior, but it also teach you the coding. Specifically, how to code it with a little Arduino thumbstick and using the Arduino platform. But if you want to control it like this, that's a separate video. And this is completely analog from the directionality to the speed control. I'm gonna close this video by saying a thank you for watching and thank you to you and your family for doing this. This was a lot of work for us. A lot of work. A lot of work. I'm gonna to wanna to try to remember how, how Like we filmed a lot. Um, I wanna dedicate this first video to my late dog Gohan. He made it to 15 and a half. Um, he was a Tamascan wolf dog, and if you've ever had a wolf hybrid, um, they're something different. They're something deeper. They're like a little human. It's it's nuts. Um, I love him dearly, and he was honestly, I consider him a teacher to me. And um, you were there. You remember him too? Yeah. And you guys were there um, uh, before we put him down. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> <laughs> this one's for you, man. And um, never stop learning, <laughs> never stop growing, and hope to see you in the next video. Take care. You like a good chest scratch, huh? You like a good chest scratch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs>